Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Uh, the new TCG ban list dropped yesterday, right in the middle of the day, on a Saturday, right during YCS and Nationals that are going on in Europe. It's absolutely insane that they did that. But here I am, a day and a half later, I've kind of had that amount of time to kind of sit back and kind of process my overall thoughts on all of the hits that happened on the list. And um, instead of giving you my instant reaction like I did in the video yesterday, which is kind of off the cuff, I wasn't even home, I can actually give you some more in-depth thought on that stuff and where I would actually put each individual hit because another thing that's kind of going unsung uh, for this ban list Spanish is freaking huge. 25 different cards moved on this list, whether they went further in or further out. Uh, 25 different cards have moved, and I'm going to give you my opinion on where all of them land as far as uh, how the moves uh, you know, land for me. But let's get into it without further ado. Uh, starting off here, Cyberstein. This, to me, is a sexy AF hit. Very happy about this one. This card only ever, like literally every time we've seen this card come up, it has come up for super degenerate stuff as far as it is concerned, competitively speaking. I'm totally fine with this card going away. I thought this card was fine way back when, you know, 5,000 life points, how do you get access to them? But between sprites, between generic machine searches, this guy has been too accessible for some of the better decks in the game. It's too much and too degenerate. So I'm down to see this guy go. A Rise Heart. Um, I would put a Rise Heart here, and I'll take it. If this was a ban, I would have put it in Sexy AF. Uh, a Cash Tier to me is not fun at all. I don't think much about the deck is really that fun, maybe to play, but definitely not to play against. And so, for me, I'd put it and I'll take it, I guess. It's still a positive thing. It makes the deck more fragile. In the grind game, they can't just continually plop down more Rise Hearts. They have to make do with the one they have. Um, and so it definitely hurts that possibility for them, but I'll put in, I take it not sexy AF, but, uh, sexy AF, but close moving on delicious memory. Uh, this one is tough, man, because we end up in a weird spot where, uh, this is one of those hits where you're kind of like, wow. I mean, listen, I, I don't play the deck. So, to me, hurting a deck that's not my deck, that's probably better than my deck, is kind of like, woo! But also, I feel for everyone who has been on this deck for three weeks, and now it's dead. I don't know about dead, dead, but like, man, from what I hear from people, uh, this is a really significant hit. Keeping the deck from, uh, from consistently getting to plump as much as they want to is brutal. Um, we'll see. Maybe it's more playable and like over time we'll see it kind of even out and people will make it, make it work. Um, but for me, I, I guess I'll put it in meh. I, I, no, I'll, I'll put it in, I'll, I'll take it because like, you know, it, like I said, it is a deck I'm not playing. It's probably better than my deck. And so I'll take any hits to decks above my deck because it kind of lowers the power ceiling of the format overall. Man, I still feel bad for those people who've only had the deck for like three weeks. And yes, it makes towers, but I do think overall it's one of the better decks to play against in the format. So, yeah. Naturia Sega Tree. This one's a big meh to me. Uh, to me, I felt like they should have gone after after Runic harder than they did. Uh, they went out, they kind of met us in the middle and kind of hit Naturia a little bit, which definitely hurts their consistency slash repeatability by hitting uh, Sacred Tree to one. But... I don't know. I guess overall, it's one of those things where Natria was a decent deck in the format. I, we were always going to find other ways to play runic variants, so I didn't think this really mattered that much. I think this is easily one of those cards. Kind of like uh, uh, other stuff we saw on this ban list. Like, down the line, it may come off uh, not that long from now. So, whatever. It's fine. Orange Light, to me, this is like horny and afraid for sure. I, it's it's a it's a card where like I kind of think about different fairy decks that I like, and I'm like, ooh, not Drytron, by the way. Even though if you're a Drytron fan, this is very exciting for you. Um, but you know, afraid because this card kind of has a little bit of what Gamma has has had going on. We just saw Gamma get hit for those exact reasons, so we'll see. Still terrified to lose to this card, just outright lose to it, but also. Uh, you know, still kind of interested in seeing like where this card leads, but still cool. Unicorn uh, definitely falls into I'll take it. Same thing as a Rise Heart. Like from three to two, it's just kind of like, huh? 
That's so nothing. Like, it's such a small consistency hit that it should have been to one, I think, and I think that would have worked out way better. It is what it is. This is what Konami went with. I'll take it. It's a hit. A hit's a hit. Fine. Uh, Lightning Storm. Um, again, a kind, of, kind of like an I'll take it take on this one. I get This could almost be meh or why, because, like, from three to two, like, what are we really doing here? But it is one of those cards that, like, can just auto-win you a game, uh, post side and so like I just hate those types of cards those auto win cards I also hate floodgates uh, kind of in that same vein of like yep going first floodgates just auto win some of these like crazy cards like evenly lightning storm stuff like that can auto win going second I kind of want to find a healthy medium of like not having too many of those cards running around but it's really hard because the the power level of decks right now is so crazy and end boards. So I guess I'll put it and take it. Just lowering the the number of those types of cards overall is fine, but not a not a hit that I think is overall that impactful. Uh, Runic Fountain to me is a big why. Uh, not even meh. I mean, I guess meh only in the, maybe in the sense that I guess pure Runic Stun would want three copies, but like other than pure runic stun i don't know if there's a single variant that actually wants to play three runic fountain in the main not a single one everybody plays two so putting it to two is like okay tip to two would have been more impactful at least it would have been like a minute consistency hit but man uh just a big why no idea on this one at all engage huge horny and afraid card here huge 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 i think strikers have always been a cool deck barring the really stupid stuff with like mystic mind before that when it was actually like a mid-range cool deck that wasn't just trying to like stun you immediately and then slowly whittle you down um cool i'm kind of excited to see where they go especially now that they've got like multiple engage and full multi-roll with their like new quick play spell that we haven't really seen much action with this year I'm very excited to see where, where Scry Stry uh, Skystriker goes. And they have two more Link Monsters a little bit down the line. So a lot going on there. We'll see where we end up with that. But very excited, but also very afraid. Uh, I'm very afraid this could just turn into one of the better decks in the format. And not the best deck to play against, but uh, definitely a good deck to play with. So we'll see. Uh, Sprite Starter, meh. Like, I didn't even think Sprite really need to be hit that hard. I mean... And they didn't. It's just math, though. Three to two. Of so many. From what I've heard, so many people not even playing three of this card in their sprite variant. So I'm just like, meh. Who cares? Steam the Cloak. Big meh. This card could have been at three, five ban. As soon as Hout got hit, this card could have been at three, essentially. So whenever that was, put this card at three. No one cares. Totally cool. Scarecrow. Man, this may be, like, biased, but, man, I'll put it in Sexy AF. This was a deck that was, like, very quickly taking off as one of the lead decks in the format. And if it weren't for Cash Tira having a pretty decent matchup against the deck, uh, this deck would have easily been the best deck in the format. It makes insane boards. It's pretty damn resilient against almost anything aside from exactly, like, Droll or Dark Ruler no more. Uh, and I just hate decks where it's, like... Everything else feels so underwhelming except for two, like one or two very specific cards. And so you have to open that card. You have to find that card or you're probably getting cooked to hell, uh, which is terrible. It's a ter terrible feeling to have. So I know this deck kind of like Pirelli has only existed for a couple of weeks. But man, this one to me was by far the more degenerate one overall. And I'm honestly not that mad about it. Plus, to be fair, like... Barring generic cards like Barone and Excel Synchro Stardust, which will probably come up in other decks down the line, buying the actual core for Super Heavy, hella cheap. So I'm not even like that. I don't even feel as sorry about this core because like the core for, for Super Heavy was like so cheap. And those generic cards will come up down the line. Uh, so it's like not even like shelling that out. It's like so brutal. Uh, so yeah, whatever. Gen X Ally Birdman, big meh. Big whatever, this card could have been at three, ten banlists ago, who cares? Sam Sarah Lotus, big meh. I don't even know too much about this FTK, but I would just assume if Konami's taking this card off as an FTK card, it's either one, not an FTK that's consistent or good enough to actually have a feel in the format competitively, or it's just not even possible. So totally fine with that. Spiral Quick Fix. I'm actually a little bit horny and afraid for Spiral Quick Fix. I think... Some of the stuff that Spirals do is actually really cool and interesting as a mechanic and that like thematically it makes sense. They're spies, so you get to spy on your opponent's hand and what their future draws are and stuff. 
Um, but, you know, we've seen what Spiral ends up doing at times. So definitely horny and afraid for that. But maybe with three quick fix, it could actually be uh, something kind of spicy. We'll have to wait and see, though. Um, definitely have to wait, wait and see. But, uh, you know, at least with Master Plan still banned, as long as that card's banned, they can have, like, everything else. And I think the deck may be interesting. We'll have to see. Uh, well, we'll wait a few weeks and we'll see what people can make do with it. But it's cool. Recital Starling, um, I'll put in a, I'll take it, I guess. Uh, this card, to me, has the same vibe with Naturia Sacred Tree of, like, we put it to one because we were terrified of it when uh, when Tri-Brigade Lyrilus was, like, the top deck in the format, and we wanted to really put it, put a dent in that deck. And then, like, look at us now. We're, like, what, a year and a half, two years later, and the card's free because we were, like, oh, yeah, we power crept them pretty quick. We're, we're fine. It's, I expect fully the same exact thing to happen with Naturia Sacred Tree. Within a year or two, we'll be like, oh, yeah, we kind of power crep, you know, Runic and Nature, specifically Naturia Runic. Not a problem. Let's go ahead and bring this back. Uh, that's kind of what I, I kind of put those cards very similarly. Uh, Drago Face Off. I, I guess I'd put this in. I'll take it. I'm not like super, super excited about it, but I think it's cool. It's a card that probably should have come off the ban list in a while or a while ago, but. It's a nice tool for some Pendulum decks. We'll take it. Nothing huge. Multi-roll. It's going to go horny and afraid. It's going to pair hand-in-hand in hand with Engage. Nothing too much to add here. These are both really powerful cards. Strike, uh, Sky Striker, I feel, still think, even before these cards moving, was a solid, interesting deck. Now I'm, like, even more scared about it. We'll see where it goes with this, but yeah. Diablosa is sexy AF, for sure. This is maybe the single most degenerate thing that's been going on in the format. If this card is resolving especially if they're going first, you probably just auto-lost the duel. That's just kind of what this card meant. Terrible, garbage, whatever. A pointer, after a whole day and a half and also hearing people's um, experience with this card, actually very happy that it's banned. Uh, specifically with Triple Tactics Thrust, uh, a lot of people would like get hand-trapped in their in their turn one combo, still be able to make something like a midi medium level board, but with thrust, just grab a pointer post side and then hand rip with full hand knowledge on your opponent is brutal. It just wins the game. So I heard a lot of people saying like thrust into this card uh, post side was like just an auto win. And I don't like that. So totally fine to have this card go. I thought it was a mid hit, like whatever, you know, we'll take it. But uh, it, it seems way better than I was giving it credit for. Brand Expulsion. I'll put in Sexy AF as well. Or maybe, you know what? I'll just put it in and I'll take it. Um, there's bigger hits you could do to Brand if you really wanted to limit the deck. But it looks like they don't really want to limit the deck. They really just want to limit the degenerate side of the deck. Which is still fine with me. Um... For now, it seems like there are just enough counters in the game for Branded overall that, like, if it's really a bothersome thing in the format for you, you can play enough stuff to to give that deck problems. Uh, but, like, they just didn't want to have something like this part of the deck. They still have other ways to do some other degenerate things, but they're harder to get to. They're not as consistent, all that kind of stuff. So I think this still balances them out a little bit. We'll take it. Uh, Blaster. Blaster's cool. I'll put in Sex AF. This is the one, like, remove card that I'll put in sexy AF. Um, he's cool. I don't expect him to do much. I don't think there's many fire decks that are like super graveyard reliant, maybe other than Salamangrate, but I'm not even sure this guy would be even that good in salad. So whatever. I just don't expect him to do much in many decks. Circular. I'll put circular in sexy AF too. Uh, I mean, to be honest, like even though I was playing math mech fairly recently, I think this is a good hit because like, while it doesn't nearly kill really any cyber stack, I mean, maybe no, I think even pure math mech can like find ways to recover from this. You have three small world, three sign of mining, the one copy of himself, you know, and you're even talking about one card rank fours that search this card using Alan Bershon. Like you can get access to this card pretty damn easily, but with only having one, you lose repeatability in the deck. And I think that's a big part of why this card going to one is, is solid. Totally fine. I don't really want to see him get banned. I think one copy is totally fine. And I hope it stays this way. And I hope this is a good balance in between for a lot of people. But we'll see. Gamma. This also to me is a sexy AF one. A good amount of sexy hits on this list for me, to be honest. Um, Gamma is just one of those cards that's brutal, right? Playing a Super Heavy Samurai. You have Droll. You feel so good about it. You fire it and you get Gamma. You auto lose. I mean, you, you really have to have like two or three other hand traps and one or two starters extenders in hand to like really have a chance from that point on. 
otherwise you're you are you're screwed you are in so much trouble um and so i didn't like that this card could be offensive or defensive kind of like that to protect yourself it's just it's such a high ceiling card and when you you just know gamma is kind of like droll in the essence of when you know it's being played in the main deck in a format like by everyone or at least by like a really large amount of people it's probably not the healthiest of formats so uh that's a good thing that is he's a, he's going gone at, at a one in one ratio really the only way you're really playing gamma is if you play a deck like super heavy where like where they're ending on the board that searched a gamma on end phase that's really the only build that I see really playing this type of uh, this card anymore. Uh, and I think that's probably for the best. I'm not mad about that. And the last card we have is Danglong. Huge, horny and afraid card for me. Uh, specifically from a Zephra fan. Very excited to mess around with this card in Zephra and see what we can get uh, going there. Uh, but I am still terrified. I mean, it, this card could be the difference between like Sword Soul now creep, especially with all the hits to the top decks in the format. Does Sword Soul with with Danglong creep up to best deck in the format status? I don't know, but it, it definitely could be uh, lurking there. So very curious to see where they go there. But yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Those are the 25 cards that got hit on the ban list. Those are my more defined thoughts on them, giving me a full day to kind of process everything. Um, honestly, I like this ban list. I know there's some weird stuff like the Scarecrow and the Pirelli hit that seemed like way too early, but a lot of stuff came off the list that could have come off the list. Um, a lot of stuff went on the list that should have and like a lot of the more degenerate stuff in the format So I'm actually not mad about that at all And we even got a couple of like really exciting things like Denglong, like Engage Where like I said, I am afraid of them But it is still exciting to, to just look at the, the ban list right out the gate and be like Ooh, what are these cards gonna do? And I like that, I like having that feeling early into a new format but we'll see. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts overall, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, let me know your thoughts down below on uh, on these different cards. How did you interpret some of these hits? Did you like them more than I did? Hate them more than I did? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear that stuff. But I'm out of here for today. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.